Welcome back to a new year. Um, we are going to finish out this term talking about circles and also volume. Now, this unit is all about circles. Um, today, a lot of vocabulary. And then we're also just going to look at area and circumference of circles as well. All right, so let's get started. So a circle is a set of all points on a plane, which means it's going to be flat that are equal distance from a given point called the center. All right, you will see in our pictures a dot, or if there are things drawn into the circle, um, things might intersect at the center, but we use capital letters, all right? So there's your center. And I'm gonna just give this a capital P, all right? So use capital letter to name. And of course, it's a capital letter because it's a point, and that's how we name points with capital letters. All right, a radius of a circle is a segment with endpoints, one being the center and the other is on the circle. So if we go from the center out any place, we use a lowercase r to show the radius. A chord is a segment that both endpoints will be on the circle. So if I put Pick a point here and one here and connect, that's a chord. Now there's one special chord and that is the diameter, all right? And so the definition of a diameter is that it's a chord that specifically passes through the center. And then of course, since it goes through the center, the diameter is equal to two times the radius, all right? We will use a lowercase d, all right, to represent the diameter. Now, there are a couple types of segments that we can draw um, in a circle or around a circle, the first one being a secant. Now, it can be a line. It could also be a segment, though. You wanna make, right? A line, you'll have arrows at the end, a segment, you won't. So this is a line or a segment that intersects the circle in exactly two points. All right, so if it's a line, it's gonna look like this. If it's a secant segment, then one end point will be on the circle, and then the other one will be out here like this. All right, but it will intersect. I'm gonna mark the two places that it's intersect. All right, so this is a secant line, but then this would be a secant segment. All right, now this endpoint out here would be connected to something else. All right, and you'll see lots of pictures like that a little later. A tangent is a line or a segment that intersects in exactly one point. All right, so secants are two, tangents are one. So if it's a tangent line, it's gonna do that. It doesn't go through the circle, but it's gonna touch that circle, all right, in one place. All right, a tangent segment, kind of the same thing. All right, no arrows, but it will still touch in one place. Now, the point at which the tangent is intersecting the circle is called the point of tangency. So I'm gonna draw a tangent line in this way this time. So this place where our tangent is intersecting, this right here is the point of tangency. Okay. All right, that's the first page. Right. There are different types of angles, and we're going to spend one day looking specifically at each one of these. So one day we'll spend on central angles, and then another day we'll spend on inscribed angles. A central angle is an angle whose vertex um, is at the center. 
and then the other two sides are radii. So you're gonna have one radii, two radii, and so right here, this is a central angle. Okay, an inscribed angle is an angle with a vertex on the circle. All right, and then the other two sides will then be chords. All right, so if it's vertex is on the circle, and then we create the sides to that angle. All right, notice these are then going to be chords. All right, this is your inscribed. Okay. All right, an arc. An arc of the circle, it's a portion of the edge of the circle that's defined by two endpoints. All right, and the symbol is an arc. Looks like that. All right, so you will have to curve it. So if I drew in a central angle, this piece of the circle is what we call intercepted. All right, so this is an intercepted arc. All right, our inscribed angles will also have intercepted arcs. It's that piece of the circle, that arc measure right there, okay? Now, our arcs can be minor, major, or a semicircle. A minor arc, right, is an arc with a, a measure less than 180 degrees. All right, so kind of keeping with the picture I drew above. All right, I'll make it a little bit bigger. All right, this right here, piece right here, is less than 180. <clears throat> now, I'll call the center P, and then I'll call this point where my radius hits the circle, and a, and then this point over here where the second radius hits the circle B. So this would be arc A, B, and we put that arc symbol above it like that. A major arc is an arc with a measure that's <clears throat> greater than 180. All right, so if I'm gonna draw the same picture I had above, so here I've got point A, my center is P, here's B. And so really, how would I know to go the minor arc way, the shorter way that's less than 180, or that I wanna go around the longer way? Because both start at A and both end at B. So the way we know is now we're gonna use three letters to name it, right? So only two letters tells me to go the short way. Three letters tells me to come the long way. So I know I'm starting at A, I know I'm ending at B, so there's gonna to have to be a third point somewhere on that major arc. So I would call this arc A, C, B, with the arc symbol above it. But then that tells me because of the three letters that I'm going the major arc way, the longer way. Now, we haven't talked about, but we should be reminded that a whole circle is 360 degrees. All right, so we're not going to go over that. A semicircle is an arc with the endpoints on the diameter. All right, so if I draw in a diameter, the endpoints of that split my circle in half. And so whether I go above, or I go below, it doesn't matter. Both of those are semicircles, always 180. All right, so again, if that's A, that's B, the center we'll call P. It doesn't matter when you name a semicircle if you use two letters, because it doesn't matter which direction I go. If I go clockwise, it's still 180. If I go counterclockwise, it's still 180. But you might also, though, see it named with three letters. All right, both are acceptable. All right, so you can have either two or three letters. 
Now, that being said, when you're given the name of an arc and you're asked, is it minor, major, or a semicircle, you have to look at the picture. You can't assume that just because it's two letters, it's going to be minor. And if it's three letters, it's major. All right. You have to look at your picture and where are the endpoints? Because some of them might be semicircles. Right. So a lot of vocabulary. Let's talk about area and circumference. All right. Um, area of a circle is obviously it's all this space inside a circle. That's what we're talking about. All right. The formula for area is pi times the radius squared, pi r squared. Remember with area that the units are always squared. All right. So if it's feet, it's feet squared, inches, inches squared. That helps me remember that the formula that, ha that has the r squared, and since area is always squared, that helps me keep my formula straight. Okay. Circumference of a circle is the distance around. It's the perimeter, so to speak, of a circle. All right, but it's called circumference. We use a capital C. And that formula is 2 times pi times r, 2 pi r. Now, we mentioned earlier that 2 radius is also the diameter. So you might see it just as pi times the diameter. Okay, all right, you should have those formulas memorized. So very simply, number one, it says find the area and circumference of the circles. So looking at my picture, that five, this is a radius, the way that it's labeled. So to find the area, I'm simply gonna do pi times the radius squared. Whoops, didn't put the five in. Well, don't want to start over. Five squared. <laughs> right. Now, you'll see some problems where they say, you know, give your answer in terms of pi. If that's the case, then we're going to leave the pi alone and we would just multiply out the numbers. So 25 pi meters squared. All right, this would be leaving in terms of pi. That's what that means. If it doesn't say to leave it in terms of pi, then you're going to use your pi key on your calculator. All right, so let me go to my calculator. We're not going to type in 3.14. We're actually going to use the pi key which gives you 3.14159 and a lot more decimals. So we're going to do pi times 5 squared, which is 25, and we get 78.54. Now, it doesn't tell us to round to the tenths or hundredths. So just for the notes, I'm going to go out two decimal places. If you go out just one, just make sure you're rounding properly. And then, of course, this is meters squared. Circumference. All right, because I'm given the radius, I'm going to use the 2 pi r formula. So I'm going to have 2 times pi times 5. Again, if it said leave it in terms of pi, then it would be 10 pi. Now, circumference, we don't square the units. It's just meters. All right, if it doesn't tell us to do that, then we're going to do pi times 10. And we get 31.42 meters. Okay. Uh, part B, you have to notice that this is not a radius. What is given in the problem is a diameter. All right. So in order to do area, you have to have the radius. So I'm just simply going to take the 22 and divide it by 2. And I know my radius is 11. So when I go to do the area, I'm going to have pi times 11 squared, which is going to be 121 pi. If they tell us to leave it in terms of pi, or it's going to be pi times 380.13 
centimeters squared. For circumference, all right, you can always use the two pi r formula, or we can just simply do pi times diameter, so pi times 22. Now, if it says leave it in terms of pi, move the number to the front, so it would be 22 pi. If it doesn't, then we're going to get, and actually this time I'm going to add the squiggly. So you'll notice, um, probably on my answer keys, that instead of equals, when I get to the final state, final step, that I am actually not using equal, but I'm using this squiggly equal sign, which just means approximately. All right, because 22 pi, if we leave it in that form, that's an exact answer. The minute I type it in and round it, now it's an approximation. All right, I will not take off if you don't use the approximate signs, but you'll see those on the answer keys and that's why they're there. All right, so those are just two very straightforward problems. Uh, number two, this one wants us to find the radius of a circle and we are given the circumference. So whatever you are given, you're obviously gonna start with that formula. And since we want to find the radius, then it makes sense to start with circumference equals two pi r. So this time we fill in what we have and that's circumference. So that 42.73 is gonna I go below the C, and then I've got 2 pi r. Since I want to solve for r, then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and by the pi. All right. Now, want to be careful, all right, because when we're typing this in the calculator, all right, we want to type it in, so we're doing 42.73 divided by and then 2 pi that way. All right, so we've got 42, 3, 2. Because if you don't put parentheses around it or break it up in two steps and you do 42.73, and let me just show you, 42.73, if you do divide it by 2 pi like that, it's going to divide by 2 only and then it will multiply by pi. All right, so we got to make sure that you're either going to do it in two steps Divide 42.73 by 2, then divide it again by pi. Or just put parentheses around the 2 pi, and it will divide by that whole thing. All right, so I am getting 6.8. And then inches will be the units. Okay. Number three says find the diameter of a circle with an area of 254.47 square centimeters. All right, so we want the diameter, but this time we're given the area. So I have to use area equals pi r squared, only one formula for that. So I can't solve directly for the diameter, but I can solve for the radius and then double it to get the diameters. So that's what we're gonna do. So 254.47 goes under the A equals pi r squared. So I need to get R by itself. So step one, we're gonna divide both sides by the pi. So 254, which is giving me 81.000. So I'm gonna put the point zero equals R squared. And then of course to unsquare, we're gonna take the square root of both sides. So I end up with r equaling nine. To get the diameter then, we're simply gonna do two times nine. So 18 centimeters will be the diameter. Make sure that looks like times and not point. <laughs> All right, and our last problem, it says find the area of a circle with the circumference of 17 pi feet. Now notice they left the pi in there, All right? They didn't multiply and give us a decimal, that's okay. So we wanna find the area, but we're given the circumference. So in order to find the area, we need r. We need to know the radius. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this circumference, 
all right, which I know is 2 pi r. And I'm going to put the 17 pi in for c. I actually like it when they leave pi in there because very easily I can see when I go to divide by pi, those pi's cancel each other out. So really what I have is 17 equals 2 r. And then if I divide by 2, right, we're going to get 8. 0.5 is the, is the radius. Once we know the radius, now I can find the area. So area is going to be pi times 8.5 squared. All right. And I'm just going to type that in directly. And then I get. 226.98 units we're working with our feet so this would be feet squared all right so look at what's given start with that formula and then work your way to what they're asking you to find all right remember units are mandatory so make sure you're paying attention circumference are just normal units area your units will always be squared when you're finding radius or diameter, those are just normal units. Okay, but pay attention to that when you're doing the work. If you have any questions, let me know, but you should be ready to practice.